Hello and welcome back to the January Zenotic Dual Cup hosted by Spike and commentated by me and possibly Drainer at some point. Hopefully. Uh, we have Spike versus Seakeep. We're over on Fuse. Spike made this map after the show on uh, Zoilent, which you can see in another video that would have been posted before this one. Uh, I'm expecting a Spike win. But... Here we go. Also, spoiler alert, I know how many demos I've been sent, so... <laughs> Whoops. Uh, but this is Spike's map. I, it's difficult to beat Spike on a Spike map. He built his maps very much to the style that he likes to play because there weren't very many maps in that style. And this map is so good, it even got into Quake Live. So, yeah, how good this map is. But we're going to see a different style of play, I think, from Zoilent, because these two players can't play quite as aggressively. It's more difficult to play aggressively on this map than it is on Zoilent, because it's there's not so many... Zoilent, wherever you are, you can get to somewhere else very quickly. So if your opponent's going to somewhere else, you can probably beat them to that place, because there's a million different ways to get there. Especially if you've got a little bit of extra health and aren't afraid to go into the void somewhat. Floating around the edges. With blast, even just with blaster, that's discounting uh, air rocket jumps and all that sort of really fancy jazz. Seeky so just trying to get away here, but Spike with a little bit faster movement able to keep on his tail. Keep following him. And we're going to watch Spike, we're just going to see him time all the items. And that's what really makes this map kind of a very Spike-oriented map. Because if you can time all of the items, you can completely stop your opponent from getting any. Because there's only there's no Mega Armor. There's only a Mega Health and two small Armors, 50 Armors. And... It means that you can always pick up those smaller armors rather than having too much health to be able to pick up the medium armors, the 50 armors. And that means that someone like Spike, who can time all the items and continuously pick them up again and again and again and again, is always going to be able to pick up those armors very easily. Always going to be able to get to that mega health. And. Your opponent's kind of going to have a lot less armor. It does mean that people die a lot quicker. Compare this to something like Aggressor where you've got two mega armors. Or Zoilent where you've got two mega armors. And uh, people dying slowly there. There's a lot more health on offer. But Zoilent does ban it, balance that out by being able to just pop people into the void for an instant kill. Again we just see Spike... Very comfortable with his timing. Seeky playing a much faster game though. You can see Spike he hovers around a location for 10, 20 seconds, then moves on, 10, 20 seconds, then moves on. Very cycle based, obviously needs to be to be able to pick up those items, but it's pretty much just grab an item, move to the next room. Grab an item, move to the next room, grab an item, move to the next room. And the item, the room that he moves to doesn't always have to be the one with the item that he wants in it. Ooh, see, he's going to be able to take Spike out. Five health, five armor. How has he managed to survive that at all? That's quite incredible from Spike. He might be able to get this 25. And if Seeky doesn't manage to get some decent damage on him soon, he's not going to go down. But there we go. Seeky manages to get Spike Beautiful display there, managing to get a lot of health on him, put Spike completely on the back foot where he couldn't go for an item, because Seeky does have timings on these items. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Spike has these to the half second, but Seeky's going to have them somewhere roughly, you know? He's not going to know exactly potentially, but he's going to know when the items are up and when to kind of be around and... At the very least, have within 10 seconds of one item, and probably the Mega, and then vaguely know whether something's a little bit before or a little bit after the Mega. That's normally how people time items. But Spike, I think he honestly does just time every item. 
It is. He, unless he's just got an incredible game sense, but Spike blowing himself up there. Five minutes remain. And uh, nice shots from Siki. Definitely, definitely pulled himself back up a little bit. But it is one of those games where Spike's going one. Uh, one kill for Seeky, two kills for Spike, which does keep him vaguely in control, but he hasn't had control for about two or three minutes. And it looks like he's slightly falling behind. Seeky's going to come in here and manage to take him out again. Seeky's going to have all the items converting that frag again. And now Spike needs to know where the items are. I think he's lost timing now. And as we saw... Oh, he hasn't lost timing at all. He hasn't lost timing at all. I was going to say, he's lost timing. And see, he's a bit better of a flow player. And kind of plays well with the flow. But no, Spike has absolutely got the timing. And he's not a bad flow player either. Both players popping shots at each other. You know where your opponent's going to go a lot on this map. Um, when they're taking a route, you kind of know which route they're going to be at. It's just not very often that you can counteract that route. Because you'll be playing across quite big rooms. All the rooms in the game are quite large. So the you for you to catch them up, you're going to have to be much faster. And both of these guys have got very fast movement. Um, both regular... Uh, Defrag players, Zenotic Defrag players, and quite good ones at that. And yeah, if you're playing in quite a large room and you want to get to the other side of it to chase them down, you're going to have to be a lot faster. If you want to go another way and catch them, they're probably going to get there first if they started moving first. A lot of things in this map take the same amount of time. Which puts you in a position like Spike's about to be in. He's going to spawn. And now Seeky's, he knows where Seeky's going to be. And he knows where he's going to get there. But Seeky knows where he's going to be. And they both get there at the same time. So there's no setup time for either end. But Seeky had the better weapons. And had the health to take a couple of shots. Now Spike started to get a little bit of a stack. And I think he's playing defensive deliberately here. And this was a much closer game than I thought it was going to be. This is potentially going to go to overtime. Or at least very close to it. But you can see Spike. He's playing very defensively from very far way out. I think Seeky's just made a small mistake by pushing down there. And might be taken out here. Spike doesn't have the vortex. Which means he's having to go for little pot shots with the uh, shotgun. Which is a bit of an RNG fest. He's now got that Vortex. He knew he needed it and he went over to pick it up. But he can't land the shots with it. I think he's a little bit nervous. You can see it in, kind of in the way that his crosshair's moving. It's not quite as beautiful as it otherwise would be. And he's lost a little bit of time because he wasn't going to go for that mega health until he saw that it was actually up. Knew that he needed to get it, otherwise Seeky was going to get it. But no frags for the last couple of minutes, which is very... Well, there's one. But it would it did surprise me. Uh, both players must have been incredibly low at different points, but neither went down. Now Spike can definitely afford to just kind of sit and wait and play a defensive game. Zeke's going to try and stop him from taking that mega health. He's going to fail quite badly there, though. Spike taking the mega health and not taking any real damage in the process. Normally you, you kind of set yourself up to try and... If they are going to take that weapon or that armor or that health... Uh, they should take roughly the amount of damage it costs that they gained. You know, so they don't come out with anything over you. But... Spike now looking in control of this map. A very close game in the end there though. After the start, Seeky managed to pick it back up, take control. That was a beautiful shot from Spike. While Seeky just wasn't looking, wasn't thinking that he'd be there. Spike setting up those balls. I'm sure Seeky saw them coming in, those electro balls. Saw them coming in, sat on the side. 
looked at them and went, there's nothing I can do, and got blown up. And do an incredible amount of damage with those. So, that is it. It is GG. Spike is going to take the, uh, the honours on this one. And gain a point in the group stage. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you didn't, go watch the Zoilink game. And join me next time for another duel in the same cup. Thank you for watching. See you next time.